And Judd Bushler, the new leader of this Wildcat team, hits it. Well, we mentioned he exemplifies this kind of West play. He's an excellent defender, and he's also an unselfish player. At small forward, he's second on the team in assists with about four per game. And he picks up Porter out on top. Martin is going to take it from 18. No good. And Bushler got it in the eye on the rebound. Well, Bobby Martin's going to get that shot all day, but I don't think Paul Evans would be happy with him settling for that. Mason got it in low to Womack. He lost the handle. And back come the Panthers. Here's Porter flying in. And a whistle and an offensive foul as Porter with the charge. Well, we mentioned the difficulty that Darrell Porter's had in making the transition. As you see Rod Brooken coming in, he has a problem making certain decisions and making the right ones. And Paul Evans has been down on him on occasion because he's made the wrong decision. Brooken sat out the better portion of three games with a dislocated shoulder. He played briefly the other night against Syracuse. And he'll see more action today. Tied at five. Porter almost with a steal. Pitt now is in their 2-3 zone. Two guards out front on each side of the free throw line and the three big men on the back line. Brian Williams, sweet shot inside. Well, Lute Olsen is very happy with the progress Brian Williams has made. A lot of people expected an awful lot of him, but he's been slowed by injuries. He missed last year because of the transfer, but he's shown some really stellar play in the last couple of games. Shorter got it in lower. He loves it. Couldn't get it to go, but the tip is in. Well, against the zone, there's a lot of openings for rebounding. Once you can get inside the paint area, a lot of people crashing. Martin found the seam there. So that's Martin's first basket. Milbach had a notion outside. Good entry pass to Womack, but he walked with it. Brian Shorter loves to get it in the paint, Len. Well, they call him Mini Moses because he uses his body so well. He's always around the board. That time, just a nice little quick duck-in move. And by duck-in, it means you take the player guarding you the opposite way, then step in, duck into the paint where you can receive the ball cleanly. Pittsburgh with a chance to lead. There's the pass in shorter again. Whistle before the shot. The foul on Mueller. Well, the Arizona defense, as we mentioned at the top of the show, it's predicated on a help concept. And Matt Muehlbach came all the way from the other side. You see Shorter with great position on Bushler, who's fronting him. Muehlbach came from the opposite wing to try to help out. He got there a step too late. Lute Olsen's Wildcats practice yesterday, and they had somebody trying to front where Shorter would be throughout that practice. Yet Pittsburgh still found a way to get it into him a couple of times already today. Here's Brooken on the jumper, and he's fouled. That'll be on Judd Bush for his first. Well, the insertion of Rod Brooken was to give the Pitt offense a little bit more stability. He's a senior, he's a co-captain of the team, and he's pretty much a leader. He's got a very effervescent personality. He really picks these guys up when he enters the game. So Brooken will go to the free throw line. As we said, a dislocated right shoulder, the same problem he had back as a sophomore, only it was the left shoulder more, two years ago. It's the free throw. And we were kidding him yesterday. You know, if he doesn't make it in pro basketball, he can always be an escape artist <laughs> like Houdini. Dislocate those shoulders and skip out of those straight jackets. And he hits both free throws. So Pitt with a two-point lead. 16.05 to go first half. Harvey Mason, not known as a shooter. And a whistle inside. It'll be a foul on Martin in low. And that is his first. With 16 minutes to go first half. Pitt leading by two. For Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh up by two, 9-7. We talked about Jason Matthews and Brian Williams having been high school teammates at St. Monica High in Santa Monica, California. We had a chance to talk to them yesterday about how their games have changed since the old high school days. who was the big man inside, and Jason Matthews was the outside shooter on that team. Jason says he figures if he drives the paint sometime today, Williams will be there with an elbow to meet him. An old friend's reunion. We both had a lot of smiles, but it's all business this afternoon. 
Bushler trying to look into Rooks. Nice defense by Brooklyn. Pitt back out in a man-to-man, and looks as though Arizona really didn't expect it. Nice tip. Bushler got it off the glass. Well, Bushler doing a nice job of getting inside in good inside position. I mean, this is a guy, again, who is a work ethic type of player. You know, he doesn't have the greatest of skills. He's not a great leaper, but he's worked on his game. He plays excellent defense. And I think uh, his ability to play volleyball has a lot to do with it. No, no doubt about that. He says volleyball collegiately is not in his future. There was some talk that maybe he would use a year of eligibility when he was done playing basketball for the UCLA on a volleyball scholarship. He says that's not the plans right now. He hits the free throw to complete the three-point play. Here's some backcourt pressure now by the Wildcats. Here's a two-on-one, and Matthews can make up some ground. Nice job by Bushler to get back defensively, Len. Well, the pressure is something that Pitt expected. They worked on it in practice yesterday, and one of the things that you want to do is when you beat that front line, that front wave, you want to attack, and that's what Pitt attempted to do there. Darrell Porter will inbound. Matthews out to Brooklyn. Now Pittsburgh resets. Martin, one-hand hook, didn't go. Porter will start it again, and he's going to try to do something. Got it out to Brookings. Jumper won't go in Pittsburgh. Doing a nice job getting some breaks, I guess, on the caroms. Here's a three. Jason Matthews deadly from three-point area, but you give a lot of credit to Bobby Martin and Brian Shorter. They're outside inside, but they kept the ball alive for three opportunities. So Pitt still up by a pair. Here's a lob underneath, picked off by Martin. You see the three-point percentage, Pittsburgh, and uh, Matthews has hit two today. There he is. In fact, he led the Big East in three-point percentage a year ago. Porter and trying to get it into shorter, but Arizona doing a better job inside. Brook and double team force one, and it goes out of bounds. It'll be Arizona ball. Well, it looked as though Brooklyn couldn't see the basket before the trees, so to speak. It was a four shot, not really characteristic of uh, Rod Brooklyn's play. There is some tall timber in there. Williams and Rooks are both 6'11". Bushler, nice move to the hole. And they're going to call him for the charge. That's his second personal foul. Well, Bushler not really known as a driving, slashing type of player. He saw the opening in the man-to-man, -man, but a good defensive job. The big guy stayed at home. Walmack's going to check in, and Bushler will sit down with two fouls. Here with 14.28 to go in the half. He doesn't want to pick up the cheap third one, and Lou Olson's telling him that. Well, Wayne Womack, you're not going to lose an awful lot with him. He's shown that he's got uh, the ability to go out here and rebound. It's something we'd also emphasize over the summer for him. Arizona, obviously, with the edge in depth, and they can afford to bring in a guy like Womack, as I mentioned. Brooklyn goes up, and he's fouled. Talk about depth. They have had seven different players be their leading scorer this year. So, I mean, Arizona can mix it up for you. Well, it's quite a contrast from last year when they had that go-to guy, Sean Elliott. But that's one of the things Lute Olsen loves about his team. A lot was expected of them early, but they really weren't the team that people spoke about. Now they're coming along, rounding into themselves, and he's really happy. He looks forward to March when he thinks his team is going to peak. Of course, they lost Sean Elliott, Anthony Cook, and Kenny Lofton, all playing professionally in one sport or the other. As Brooklyn hits both free throws and pit by four. And Brooklyn, a perfect four for four from the line. That's been one of the problems for Pittsburgh, but not so far today. Well, the surprising thing with Pitt is that they have really been able to seal off the inside. Brian Williams and uh, Sean Rooks have been relatively quiet. Williams, his 15-footer's good. Well, if he can't get the ball on the blocks because Pitt's up doing such a good job on him, he's going to pull out, and he's got that kind of range. Cuts it to a two-point Pittsburgh lead. Now Arizona's going to come back in a man-to-man. Opic in there for the Wildcats. Matthews drives on Muehlbach. Porter from outside, no good. Nice position for the rebound for Shorter, and he's fouled by Rooks. Well, a nice matchup would be Brian Williams and Sean Rooks, either one on Brian Shorter. They're about four or five inches taller. Shorter listed at 6'6", and Rooks and Williams listed at 6'11". 
but uh, nevertheless, Shorter uses his body well, gets good position. He's always aware of when his teammates are going to shoot. Name might be Shorter, but he plays taller, doesn't he? <laughs> Very good. Brian David checks in. David had some big rebounds in the win over Stanford on Thursday. Shorter's first trip to the free throw line. Boy, Pittsburgh not showing the poor free throw shooting we'd heard about. They come in as a team just over 69%, but they're five for five so far today. So the difficulty that Pittsburgh had in their free throw shooting is when it gets in the second half down a stretch, because they don't have that depth, a lot of guys have played a lot of minutes, and maybe it's the fatigue, but right now, they're feeling pretty uh, chipper right, right here. Pittsburgh's mixed it up nicely for a four-point lead. Matthews has six, Shorter and Brooken with four each. Womack's gonna bring it out, try to get it to Optic to reset it. Matthews with some nice defense on Optic. Well, Pitt's primarily a zone type of team, but they're doing an excellent job man to man. Jason Matthews doing a good job on Optic. There's the steal. Back comes Porter, leads it off for Shorter, and he scored. No basket. And that is gonna be a foul on Porter. That'll be his second. Pittsburgh six for six today at the free throw line so far. And they've lost a lot of games with free throws being their biggest problem. In fact, when they win, their six wins, they're shooting 74%. In their 10 losses, they're only shooting 66% from the free throw line. So it's been a big difference for them. There's another turnover. Womack wasn't looking for the basketball, and Shorter will pick it up and drop it off to Porter. Well, Arizona obviously not very sharp. One of the problems Lute Olsen felt was going to occur is the fact that they came from Tucson Thursday night or Friday morning to come here to Pittsburgh, and his team might be a little tired. Milbach comes off with a rebound. He's going to run it up. Takes it all the way himself. But he missed the layup, and here comes Porter. Martin lost the handle. It's a little ragged on both ends right now. Now, there's where a point guard who's got point guard instincts would recognize that a lot of times you get those big guys running the lanes. You don't give it to them too early and force them to put it on the floor. You want to be able to get them in a position where they just pick it up and lay it up. The turnover is very unlike Arizona. They're only averaging about 10 a game, but they had trouble against Stanford the other night with a turnover. Brooking for three. No good. And his shooting touch may be a little bit off with that bad shoulder. Rod Brooking packs the kind of pounds that <laughs> Barkley did back in high school, or in uh, college, I should say. But he doesn't have that rise. That's true. Womack, they give him a lot of room. Now he works to the baseline. Gave him too much room. You see what Womack adds to the Arizona offense. Very nice play, dishing it off and then going to the basket. A little bit of a give and go. Slam. Then utilizing his athletic ability. Slam cuts it to two under the 12-minute mark, first half. Water trying to work on Williams. And he loses it out of bounds. So another Pittsburgh turnover, and Arizona will have a chance to tie when we come back. 11.44 to go. First half, Pitt still with a two-point lead. Pittsburgh leading by two with 11.44 to go here in the first half. We talked to Rod Brooken yesterday about the fact that Pittsburgh seems to run out of gas with their lack of depth. This was his response. We always had a depth problem, and you, you can't use that as an excuse anymore. Uh, we know what we have to do to be a successful ball club. Everyone has to do their parts. Even the guys who are not going to play, they have to be willing to kick our behinds at practice to make us a better ball player, to make ourselves a better team. And everybody has to do their part. The other night against Syracuse, they had four players who were forced to play 40 minutes, so they just don't have the bench due to injuries and academic problems with some of the incoming freshmen this year. Bushler works for a shot on the wing, didn't get it, and Shorter up there high for the rebound. Well, just getting back to one of the comments Rod Brooklyn made, the guys who aren't playing have to be willing to force the starters to work in practice. And that's one of the problems with lack of depth. Even in practice, you've got to be able to push those starters every day. The contrast we saw from Arizona's practice to Pitt's practice. I mean, it's one of those things that'll make the starters better. And it reminds me of UCLA when Bill Walton was asked who's the best center he's ever played with. He always mentioned Swen Nader, the guy he plays against every day. It made him a better player. And both of them went on to be pretty good uh, professional great play basketball they did. players. Pothic on quarter. Nice entry pass to Martin, but he's double team. Nowhere to go. Right back to him. Got his own rebound. Good work. 
by Bobby Martin. Right now, it seems as though the big guys for Pitt are just a step quicker to the ball than those of Arizona. David's going to take it from the line. Brian David scores. Brian David's quite a story. He's come back from a pretty serious knee injury. He's a fifth-year senior right now, and he's really contributing. Hurt his knee two years ago against an exhibition game against the Soviet national team. I didn't think he'd play again, but he's worked hard to get back in. He's trying to stop shorter, and he did. Here come the Wildcats. Muehlbach on the run. Williams loses the handle on the baseline. take a look at Bobby Martin posting up. Doesn't really have anybody guarding him until the last moment. Nice follow because he knew where the ball was coming off. The ball left his hand. He was aware that he missed it. Ran right to the spot. Again, a step quicker in reacting than the Arizona big people. So the Panthers hold to a two-point lead. We work our way under the 10-minute mark first half. Oh, they look to shorter every trip. Nice lob. Well, not the nicest lob. A good thought. Off the glass, Martin couldn't get to it. But it was there. And the uh, guys are getting behind at Arizona defense. Bushler again works for the same shot, same outcome. Didn't get it. And Brooklyn will pull it down. You know, the other difference that we didn't mention so much, it seems as though the, the pit players are more physical inside. They almost thrive on the body contact, and the Arizona guys are thrown off just a little bit by the little bumps. You play Georgetown and Syracuse and Connecticut. You better get used to it. Brooklyn hits outside. Now that jumper is working for him a little bit. He's got seven. And Pitt has their biggest lead, 21-16. Well, Arizona so far, with their turnovers, I believe they have about eight turnovers right now. They're pretty surprised at this man-to-man -man defense that Pitt's shown. They practiced a lot on a zone yesterday. Brooks got it in low and scores his first basket. That's it back to a three-point Panther cushion. All alone, Brookin. This one doesn't go. Good hustle by both Othic and Shorter. Possession arrow. It'll be Arizona ball. So the little guy, I think, got in there with Brian Shorter and tied him up. Well, that's an example of the Arizona big people not really getting off their feet, getting in the game. The little guys, I think, had to peel back to help out on the rebounding. Shorter's there rebounding among the 6'11 guys and doing a good job of it. Saw the field goal percentage. Pittsburgh much better with their second chance shots, though. Scramble for the ball, collision. His third foul. Well, Darrell Porter is upset. He feels that he's entitled to the ball. It's somewhat akin to a defensive back going after a pass. But they called him for pass interference on that one. Third foul. And now we're going to have to see Kavanaugh come off Paul Evans' bench. Coach Evans is not happy on the sideline. Pat, Pat Kavanaugh is going to check in. Well, the ball is in the air. And you watch. Darrell has his eyes on the ball all the way except the contact was made. Official's judgment. Feed in. And a nice move by Brian David. He's got two baskets. And it's a one-point Pittsburgh lead. Now here's a different look. Pat Cavanaugh will now be at the point. He and Jason Matthews both out on top right now. But with the insertion of Brian David, the Wildcats have got the lift along the front line. Brooklyn got the drive and David got the foul. Couldn't quite cut him off with the pass on the baseline. We'll see Brian Williams come in for Brian David. David kind of gave the fatigue signal right before that play. And he hasn't played an awful lot. He's pretty good at stretches of maybe five to eight minutes. And he's given Arizona a big lift during the time he was in. Brian Williams checks back in. Of course, his freshman season spent at Maryland. Brian David sits down with two fouls. Pittsburgh perfect from the line today. And Brooklyn is four for four so far from the strike. Twenty-two twenty. As Brooklyn stop tries to stay perfect from the free throw line. And so Brooklyn has got nine points to lead all scores. And Pittsburgh leading by three with 7.54 to go in the half. And what an ovation.
ovation went up here at Civic Arena when the announcement was made that Franco Harris and Jack Lambert, who of course were stars on the Pittsburgh Steelers teams of uh, the 70s, and uh, they got quite a hand here in Pittsburgh when that announcement was made. A couple of chances for the Wildcats. Bushler can't get the tip. Back come the Panthers, up by three. Almost stolen by Mulebach, but he stepped on the baseline. Look on Matt Mulebach's face, but he recognizes that Mickey Crowley, the official, is right on top of it. Kavanaugh will trigger it for the baseline. It's been up by five on one other occasion, trying to match that here. Kavanaugh is going to reset it at the point. Well, Arizona's staying in their zone. It's a matchup zone. And I really believe that they're not going to match because they're afraid of the equipment. Strong hit by Brooklyn. That was an example of it right there. Brooklyn carries an awful lot of weight, but he's still got some strong legs to give him a quick step. Gives a nice little fake ball fake and steps right around Sean Brooks. And that is the main reason, I believe, that Arizona hasn't gone back to man-to-man, -to -man, something that they consider their strength. They're just really afraid of this pit quickness. Brooklyn can miss from the line. Seven straight from the free throw line. Completes the three-point play. We've got our biggest lead of the ball game. It's a little full-court pressure by Pitt. Just enough to wake Arizona up a bit. Othick got tangled up with Matthews. who will pick up his first foul. Matt Othick who uh, isn't afraid to shoot the basketball, has been in a slump this season, but he's starting to come out of it the last three or four games. David's going to check back in, and Williams will go out with some early foul trouble. Lute Olsen is really shuttling his big people in and out. I was speaking with assistant coach for Arizona, Jesse Evans, and he felt his team would ultimately wear Pitt down, particularly with their big people. Arizona, a turnover, and they get it right back. Whistle, we're going to have a foul. It's going to be on Rooks, his second. At Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Pitt Panthers so far have surprised Arizona, 26 to 20. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you. The Big East and the Pac-10 doing battle here in Pittsburgh. Well, the Pitt defense is the thing that's turned the tide for them. They've come out and played an aggressive man-to-man, -man, something that Arizona really didn't expect. They created some turnovers, and they've capitalized. The other thing is the quickness along the front line. They've been utilizing it very well, and I'm speaking of Pitt. Arizona still has to make an adjustment to try to stop those three inside guys from not only scoring, but keeping the ball alive and giving Pitt second and third attempts at the basket. Lou Olson's team with some foul trouble, and Pittsburgh now in the bonus. Kavanaugh will go to the free throw line. Turnovers are almost even as Kavanaugh hits his first point of the day. And still, Pittsburgh is perfect from the line. And that is something that's been a rarity for them this season. In fact, Paul Evans says we don't like the six foul rule in the Big East because we will keep fouling us and we keep missing the free throw, but not today. 28-20. Pittsburgh by eight. Mason loses the handle. Another Arizona turnover. So they're in double figures on the turnover column. And more importantly, thus far, on the turnovers that Arizona has caught, has created, um, Pitt's got 11 points off those turnovers, so only four off the turnovers done by Pitt. Nice pass in. Martin had it blocked from behind, but he's fouled by David. David picks up his foul, his second foul. Coming up. Uh, CBS Sports, our NCAA basketball doubleheader continues. Derek Coleman and 11th-ranked Syracuse taking on their old nemesis, Alonzo Mourning, and the third-ranked Georgetown Hoyas for the first time this year. That's a big battle in the Big East, live from the Capitol Center. Syracuse and Georgetown coming up next on CBS Sports, and then later a super middleweight championship fight. Lindell Holmes and Frank Tate will have at it. That's Budweiser Boxing live from New Orleans on Super Bowl Saturday right here on CBS Sports. Back to live action in Pittsburgh where the Panthers lead 28-20. Rod Brooken has been a big chunk of the offense today for Pittsburgh. Martin, that one rolls around and in for it. So Pittsburgh, only one miss today from the line. Nice move as David goes to the hole and he took one too many steps. It's starting to turn up the heat a little bit with some full court pressure. They sense that Arizona's real hesitant in breaking it, and they just don't have the players, once they do break it, to really convert. Here you see David receiving the ball in nice fashion, but he never put it down on the floor in order to get that extra step. 
Kavanaugh, Mason on him in the man to man. Nice move to the baseline. Leads it off for Martin. Oh, Pittsburgh's starting to feel it, Lang. Well, Pat Kavanaugh, co captain of this team. A former walk-on who earned his scholarship, doing a great job right now in the press and on offense and penetrating the distance. And Lute Olsen says maybe we should sit down and talk about this. Kavanaugh, the strong move, leaves it for Martin, and he put it home. 31-20, Pittsburgh surprising Arizona. Drive land to pick up the easy pass, Martin, for the hoop. Well, you, you want to give a lot of credit here to... Brian Shorter, watch how he uses his body down low. Kavanaugh recognizes it and goes baseline for the easy dish. You take a look at Shorter turning, getting the defensive player on his hip. Arizona's defense is predicated on helping out. And right there, Brian Shorter blocked off the help person and allowed Kavanaugh's penetration. Martin with seven points. Completes the three-point play by a dozen, the Pitt Panthers. They're on an 11-4 run over the course of the last three minutes. Arizona needs some offense this trip down, Lenny. Well, Pitt's definitely recognizing something's wrong with the Wildcats. They're pushing up the pressure, half court and full court. David cross courts it, Bushler's all along, hesitated, almost walked with it and got it off the glass. Nice under control play by Judd Bushler. Again, he's a senior on this team. He's the leader. He's got to step up to the line right now. And he is their leading scorer right now with seven. Brooklyn's been open on that baseline today. This one's an air ball. Martin with nice position. He goes back up and he's got another chance for a three-point play. And again, we mentioned that they're just a step slow. The big man for Arizona, Sean Rooks. Flat-footed as Bobby Martin does a nice job of getting position. Brooks doesn't even put a body on him. Brooks has three, and in comes Ed Stokes. We talked about Arizona's depth. Brother, they're going to have to use it because they've got a ton of foul trouble right now. Lute Olsen, we see Sean Rooks right there. Lute Olsen's playing a little bit of Russian roulette with his big man. He's hoping to come up with something. But right now, he really hasn't gotten an awful lot from anyone except for Bushler. Martin with back-to-back three-point plays, and it's Pittsburgh by 13. David lost it. Another Arizona turnover. Here comes Kavanaugh. Three on two. Pittsburgh turns it right back over. A shorter can't handle it. Lubach fouled in the lane. It's going to be on Brooken. Paul Evans, his team doing just about everything right there. And he's still on top of it. <laughs> That's a sign of a good coach, huh? <laughs> They've had some big leads along the way, but they have lost those leads to some top quality opponents. As I mentioned, this is almost like a marathon, and Arizona's hoping by shuttling their big people in and continually banging with the big people of Pitt, they're hoping because of their depth that they can wear Pitt down so they get to the point down the stretch where they're in the game and they can convert some free throws and win. The only problem is their depth could run thin with the foul trouble they have so far. Mulan gets the free throw. Four points on the deck. Arizona's really not averse to using all 15, 20 fouls that they might have from their three and four big men. Cuts it back to an 11-point Pittsburgh lead as we approach the five-minute mark. Martin in shorter. Can't quite get it. Got his own rebound. Put back in. That time Shorter was matched up against Womack, who's more or less a slender read against Shorter's bullish body, and he's no match. Stokes found himself so open he almost didn't know what to do with it, but scored anyway, and he's fouled by Shorter. Well, down at the other end, that's what you have to do. you got to make the big guy for the other team work a little bit. And Ed Stokes might just be the man that uh, Lute Olsen was looking for along the front line to kind of give him a lift. Shorter picks up his first foul, and it'll be an opportunity for young Ed Stokes to complete the three-point play. Big freshman out of California, almost a seven-footer. Picked up the loose ball, and he's fouled. So Arizona's going to have another 
Chanis here. Wildcats going to have to come up with something. What's said in a group session like that, Led? Well, normally, I mean, you're going to yell a little bit of encouragement to each other, but most of the time you're calling your defensive signals when you're on the free throw line. You're going to tell us you're a man, you're a dog, whatever. Omax got three points today. That's his first free throw. Rudolph and likes him because of his good hands and because he's a very quick-witted individual, somebody who can grasp concepts very quickly. Arizona's got it back under the double-digit mark anyway. 37-28, Pittsburgh with the lead and the ball and the nice pass in to Shorter. Can't get it to drop. He's had a couple trips down where he's had good position inside and hasn't gotten it from in close. Flying jumper doesn't get it. Stokes. Had it, lost it, Bushler on the baseline. No good. I think the quick hands, great pass behind the back to Stokes. The pit right now, they don't seem to be able to stand prosperity. They gotta take care of the ball a bit. Arizona's gonna continue to stay in there and claw. You got those hard-nosed guys like Matt Othick and Matt Muehlbach. Arizona, four of those six second chance points have been on the last two trips down court. Well, Shorter, you didn't see the steal, but he brought the ball down, and Optic did a nice job of slapping it away from him. Again, speaking to the coaching staff for Arizona, they told us, now, don't be too surprised with our guard play. You know, they're not very quick guys, but these guys like to stick their heads into it, and they've got a little bit of, uh, little bit of style to their games as well. Shorter's going to sit down. Morningstar comes in to give him a rest. Matthews works for the jumper on the baseline. Came up short. Bushler will clear it off. Now, with Morningstar in, obviously he's not the player that Brian Shorter is. Arizona's got to hope that they can make a little bit of haste during these last three minutes and 30 seconds. Stokes lost it on the baseline. Another Arizona turnover. That would have been a chance to cut it to five. Take a look at Darren Morningstar. He had started the last several games uh, with the injury to Rod Brooken. It forced Paul Evans to go a little bit deeper in his bench. When Morningstar's a big kid, he gives you an awful lot of physical presence inside. He likes to bump and grind. Let's see if Pittsburgh can get back into it. They've come up empty the last tr couple trips down court, and that's going to happen again. And Bushler gets the steal, and Morningstar will pick up the foul. Near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school. So Chevrolet players of the game coming up a little bit later. Seven-point Pittsburgh lead with 3.14 to go, and the Wildcats have worked their way back into this. Stokes back on the bench now. Whistler with seven points. One for one so far on the free throw line. Short on that one. David kept it alive. Little he picked up by Matthews. Kavanaugh ahead. Brooken. Brooken had a notion. And we have a foul underneath. And Lou Olson doesn't like that call at all. That's on David as he picks up his third. Well, with Brian Shorter out of the game, Bobby Martin becomes an inside threat for Pitt. That time the offense was pointing towards him, Brian David knew it as well. David with three, Rooks with three, and Williams with three. And Martin goes back to the free throw line. Stokes comes right back in, so his rest was short-lived. Martin with 11 points at the free throw line. Three out of four so far this afternoon. He's a 73% free throw shooter. Bobby Martin, a junior out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. We call him the Velvet Voice. He sung national anthems prior to several pit games. And he also starred in high school in the production of Superstar. But he says his singing days are over. He's concentrating on playing his game. He's played it well so far today. Bushler outside, doesn't get the jumper. And Martin with a rebound and the flying elbows. Pittsburgh by eight. Under three minutes to go first half. Brooking outside. 
Matthews works on Muehlbach. They don't have that inside threat without Shorter. Martin is now playing the spot where Shorter normally would be down in the low box. Arizona playing pretty much man to man right now. They feel that with the team they have in, they're a lot quicker than the pit team and they're able to play man. Seven on the shot clock. Got the jumper, didn't go, and Womack pulls it off for Arizona. Wildcats can cut it to six if they score. Whistle. And do we have a foul down underneath? And with official star, Garrett Morningstar may have a little bit of a problem. Paul Evans asking what's going on. You may have heard him yell Huey, and that is in reference to uh, Morningstar. It's his nickname. He's trying to get his attention. <laughs> and you can see, it looks like he's got a little mouse under that left eye. Could be a few more of those before this one's over. Womack, nice move in the paint. And that's the matchup that Arizona's going to try to exploit. Womack a lot quicker than Morningstar, also better leaping ability. The Pitt's going to play man-to-man, -man. Arizona's going to go to him. This is as close as the Wildcats have been in a long time. 38-32 Pittsburgh, and another Pitt turnover. Again, the helping defense concept. Muehlbach dropped way off his man below the line of the ball and was able to slap that ball away. Stokes was open on the weak side, and Othick didn't get it to him. Didn't get it to Womack. Nice rebound by Brooken and a great outlet pass to Matthews one-on-one -on -one with Optic. And then they're calling for the charge. Matthews picks up his second. It's good anticipation by Optic right there. Matthews, a left hander, using his left hand, I should say. And great anticipation by Muehlbach stepping up there. Optic had position. I believe he did. His feet were set, um, and he was entitled to that spot. Six-point Pittsburgh lead. Arizona's been chipping away at it. Kept alive on the Othic for three. And the tide certainly changes. The second shot opportunities are now falling in Arizona's hands. And it's Pitt who's being limited to only one shot. Vastly different from the first part of the half. Arizona's depth has paid off. They are in foul trouble, but they fought back with some backup people. And you look at the fouls there, three on three of the front line big people. And as I mentioned before, Arizona's really not averse to using all the fouls that they can, all 20 fouls on their four big people if necessary. There's about a seven second difference on the shot clock and the game clock. Pitt spreads it out, got it to Morningstar, drove the baseline, and he's fouled. star will go to the line coming up at halftime it's super bowl saturday greg gumbel will have our super bowl saturday halftime hank stram's going to be along with him who uh, back with the kansas city chiefs in 1970 20 years ago upset the minnesota vikings a heavily favored team going in san francisco likewise of course heavily favored over the broncos in tomorrow's matchup morning start the line transfer from navy Mason's going to check back in, and Bushler will come out. They don't want Bushler to pick up a cheap third foul with only 31 seconds left in the half. Also, with three small guards in right now, you can look for Arizona to kind of spread it out a little bit, utilize their quickness, either get to the basket or get an open shot, preferably a three-pointer. Morningstar hit the second, and it stretches it back to a four-point Pittsburgh lead. And the Wildcats, we assume, are going to play it for one down near the 20-second mark. Mason way out on top. Make their move. When you see 10 hit, more than likely, here comes Mason. Watch the penetrating dish. All three of those guards are shooting over 40%. Well, that's three. not the guy that I expected to take it. Martin clears it off. Count if it goes. And at halftime, Pittsburgh surprising some people with a 39-35 lead. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local station. You know the sinking feeling of a dead battery. Mommy, what's wrong? Just stay in the car. Now there's the revolutionary diehard dual start. It's two diehard batteries in one. 
a simple twist. Taps its built-in spare die hard, so you're not left stranded. Mom, you fixed it. It's cutting-edge technology, and it's die hard. Die hard dual start. More power. Well, you can bet that Arizona's going to come out again. They know that they have the front line, and they're starting, actually, with uh, Bushler, with Womack, and with Rooks in this second half. They've got Brian Williams, and they've got Sean, Sean Rooks on the bench. I'm sorry, that's uh, Ed Stokes. And they've got some guys on the bench that they can shuttle in, but they're going to try to wear Pitt down right now. Our second half underway of Super Bowl weekend. Got a super basketball game coming up after this. Syracuse and Georgetown in an IBF middleweight fight. And, of course, the big one tomorrow, Super Bowl 24, the Broncos and the 49ers. Brooking for three. No good. Womack saves it on the baseline. The lob. And Stokes scores, and it's down to a two-point Pittsburgh lead. And that's one of the ways Arizona can wear down the big guys from Pitt, getting their big people to run the floor. Stokes doing a nice job of, of going line to line, beating down uh, Bobby Martin. This is a 15-4 run now for Arizona from the last 250 of the first half. Now here to start the second half, and a foul underneath. As we mentioned before, Stokes down underneath on the other end trying to rebound, and yet he beats Bobby Martin down court. And at 6'11", that's, that's no mean feat to outrun a, a very athletic opponent in Bobby Martin, who we see at the free throw line right now. Martin, four out of six from the line, and is a co-leading scorer for Pittsburgh with a dozen in the first half. Martin's had six double-doubles already this year. Well, he's been their most consistent player over the last eight games. He's scoring over 16 points a game, getting over nine rebounds a game. Last Saturday, we saw here on CBS against Seton Hall, he had a school record, seven block shots, so he's been very active inside the paint area. Paul Evans looked to the floor as if to say, don't let our free throws go south on us now. Martin's missed his last two. Connects on that one. Three-point Pittsburgh lead see what adjustments Arizona's made offensively. Othic for three. Stokes had a hand on it, but Brooken pulls it away. Well, defensively, Pitt changed up. They started to play a triangle in two, and I'll be able to explain that if they play it the next time down. Porter back in there. He had early foul trouble for Pittsburgh. Back at the point. Brooken's going to take it from the same spot. Got it for three. Rock Brooklyn pretty deadly from the three-point area. At one time, he was one of the best six people in the business. He's got 15. That's over his average. Optic tries to answer with one of his own and does. Optic's got two three-pointers today. 43-40. LSU by four over Florida in the SEC. That's not a Notre Dame-Miami football score, by the way. There's the ACC. Wolfpack by a couple over the Terrapins. The surprising Terrapins. That's right. I should have mentioned that. Nice work by Darrell Porter. That's his first bucket of the game. All alone, Womack. Well, defensively, Pitt again, slow getting back. That wasn't even a transition. It was after a made basket. In the Big Ten, Ohio State trying to pick off Illinois, and there's a deadlock, Virginia Tech in the Seminole. Porter, another drive. Off the glass, didn't get it, but Martin knocked it in. Some of the Arizona players won a little uh, offensive interference on that one, didn't get the call, and it's a five-point Pittsburgh lead. Bushler, whistle as he went up. Shot doesn't go for Judd Bushler, who's the new leader of this Arizona team, and I asked him if he enjoys that leadership role, and he says, yeah. He says, I'm a senior, and I've been here, and I think the guys respect me, and I don't mind the role at all. And he's had the benefit of playing in some years with some fine players, Anthony Cook, and of course, Sean Elliott. And he and Sean Elliott are pretty good friends. And he picked up an awful lot. I remember doing the games when they played out in uh, the Western Regional in Boise, Idaho. And it's a very close-knit team. And I'm sure these guys trade experiences and stories and learn an awful lot from each other. Bushler with eight points and seven rebounds. Had a great game against Oklahoma last week. 18 points, nine rebounds, and seven assists as he hits both free throws. And Arizona cuts it back to a three-point Pittsburgh lead. Porter works on Othic. Nice spin to the baseline. Leaves it for Martin. Can't get it off the glass. But Brooken, oh man, Stokes put it right back in his face. 
Brooke and still picks it up. And it's going to be pit ball. Well, moments ago, we had an opportunity to see the field goal percentages, and you wonder why Pitt, who's leading, is shooting so poorly. Well, when you've got 6'11 in there and 6'9, their hands up and blocks like that, of course, they're going to weigh heavily on your mind when you do put the ball up. Matthews into Shorter. Shorter lost the handle going up. Good defense by Stokes. One-on-one, -on -one, Muehlbach and Brooken. Brooken knocked it away, but he picked up the foul. Tomorrow on CBS, it is Super Sunday. First at 11.30 Eastern. It's the premiere of our winter anthology series, Olympic Winterfest. And that's followed by NBA hoops. This will be a beauty. Phoenix taking on the Boston Celtics on the parquet floor of the garden. Then it's the Super Bowl today. Brent and Irv and the whole gang get things going at 3 o'clock. Then the big one. Kickoff at 518. The Broncos and the 49ers in Super Bowl 24. That's all tomorrow on Super Sunday right here on CBS Sports. We've got a timeout with 17 minutes to go in this one. Pittsburgh by three. The greatest show of all Police cars come on Goodyear Eagle radios than any other brand of tires. Why? Because they want it that way. Goodyear Eagles. There really is a difference. It's Wednesday morning in Ford County. Hey, Dad, is it really true that full-size Chevy pickups have more two-sided galvanized steel than Ford? That's right, son. Electricity. We asked him if this team of his is snake bitten with all the injury problems and losing big leads. It's been one of those years, like the little boy and putting his hand in the dike. You fill one hole and then something else pops. And, you know, we solved one problem. I go up to Syracuse, circus. We solved the problem against the press, and we miss eight layups. So we solve a rebound problem, and we go into a game and miss 18, 20 foul shots. So it's been uh, always something. And it just seems like we're on the verge. Uh, we're giving a lot of hustle, a lot of effort, and the practices have been good. It seems like we should be on the verge to run a few off. Trying to run one off today, but Arizona's run it back to be down by only three. And Matt Milbach will play the entire first half for the Wildcats at the free throw line to try to cut further into that Panther lead. He's not going to miss too many. An 89% free throw shooter. Lute Olson's Wildcats have fought back from a 13-point first half deficit. Milbach is sophomore. Fourth from the line, and now we got a one-point ball game. Pitt right now has got to come down. They've got to execute on their offense, primarily looking for a Brian Shorter because he makes some things happen. Morning star on top. Double team. He's got to get rid of it. Quarter lobs. They're shorter. Triple teamed, however. Stokes got a piece of it. And Martin will score. They needed that one. Well, Paul Evans may speak of the problems that he's had and solving one and another crops up, but he's got to feel as though he's got a charm life in this game. A lot of breaks going his way. Doesn't Bobby Martin sort of draw a resemblance to David Robinson? Not quite as tall, but he looks sort of like him. And of course, Paul Evans coach at Navy when Robinson was there. Martin's had a great game. Doesn't get that three-point play. Hit by three with 16.30, now remaining in the ballgame. Bushler all the way into the lane, kicks it out. Othick will bring it back, and Bushler, his three-pointer won't go. Big rebound for Morningstar. Nice job by Arizona in getting back defensively. Pitt trying to do a little running of their own, but they didn't have the numbers in their favor. Matthews and Porter working around. They try the entry pass, and Bushler picks it off. Three on two. And it's going to be pit ball. Othick got up in the air, tried to get it over to Womack, and he lost the handle. And Womack was helped just slightly <laughs> by a little body contact from Darren Morningstar, and that's his job, to get in there and be as physical as he possibly can. Neither team has held out of the ball very well today. 
Arizona, as we said, had 17 turnovers against Stanford the other night. It almost cost them that Pac-10 ball game on Thursday. But Arizona has paid for their turnovers. They've translated into pit points, and that's probably the biggest story in this game so far. Morning Star going to work inside, came up short. Shorter, rebound, no good. And he's fouled as he tried to go back up a second time. And, and this is what makes you believe the label Mini Moses. Each time he goes up against guys bigger than he is, he goes up, he gets his shot blocked, he misses, he comes back up with the rebound, always making something happen around the basket. That's why he's so vital to this team, whether he's scoring or whether he's not, as long as he's under there making his presence felt. The newcomer of the year in the Big East last year. Over 19 points and nine rebounds a game. Here's a guy we haven't heard much from, Matthews. That's his third three in the ballgame. and the groans. An awful lot of work going on under there. They are mixing it up a little bit now. Brian David will check back in and Stokes, the freshman, will go out. Bushler takes it off the inbound pass. Morningstar with another rebound. The big fella got in there. And another bump, too. He's making his presence so. Porter, nice pass in to Shorter. Double team, didn't get it. Ball's loose. Arizona will pick it up. Womack has got to whip the elbows around to clear away the defense. Bushler, great move on the baseline and a nice look by Mulebach. Well, as Arizona comes down and they ran almost a modified, a semi-fast break, you can always tell that they felt as though they were under control, just waiting and waiting until someone got open. And that's been their style this year as compared to last year when they had Sean Elliott they could always go to. Martin. Got his man in the air, takes a short jumper, doesn't get the roll. But Shorter's there again for the rebound, and again. And he's fouled. Glenn, is he a quick jumper off the floor or what? He's giving away some height inside. He's absolutely a quick jumper, but even more importantly, he's got those broad shoulders, and he's a strong jumper. He's very explosive. So when he goes up, he can shed a lot of people who are standing in the area. He goes up once, doesn't get the opportunity, he's right back up before any Arizona players leave their feet. That's been the story most of this day. Not only Shorter, but some of the other guys, including Brian Williams, who we see entering and, and Wayne Womack leaving. Arizona big guys have many times have been left standing flat-footed because of the quick jumping. Womack with four. Williams, who comes in for him, has three. Shorter at the line, hits the free throw. Brian Shorter, who was closing in on Wilt Chamberlain's high school scoring records in Philadelphia and was... Uh, dead on to break those records and then he moved on and uh, his final year was at Oak Hill in Virginia his final year of high school Arizona with a steal Martin got a little careless with the ball 53 48 Bushler outside got the three at that time Bushler left wide open and he certainly is a threat from out there. He's got 14. It's back to Pittsburgh by two. You know, shot like, shots like those that will probably open it up in the middle a little bit, try and let Brian Williams work. He's been pretty quiet offensively. Three-point field goal. Arizona has won that battle, but Matthews with a nice drive scores. His first two-point bucket of the day for him. Panthers by four, try to get into Williams, and he's fouled from behind by Shorter. His second personal. Pittsburgh, sometimes they run out of gas. This might be the reason. Look at how many minutes those five have to play. Well, Rod Brooklyn's average went down because the other night he only played maybe about eight or nine minutes. But that does have to wear on you and tell on you after a while playing so many minutes. Bushler had a nice move in the paint but didn't get the shot. see who the foul is up. It's going to be on Brian David. That's his four. So now David has four, and so does Womack. And Williams in there has three. Panthers with a four-point lead. Order to Matthews. He's going to take it from long range. Well, that's one of the reasons why Brian Williams hasn't been very active. 
taxes, a plan of maybe utilizing all the fouls of the Arizona Big Men could backfire because it takes away their aggressiveness after they get three fouls or so this early in the game. They have a tendency to kind of back off and maybe even not move as quickly as they normally would think about what they're doing. And that's how you create fouls, that reaction instinctively. With foul trouble, he's forced to stay in there because now all the Big Men seem to have the foul problem with just over 13 minutes to play in Pittsburgh by four, 55-51. Jarrell Porter picked up his dribble a little early, trying to get the entry pass to Shorter, and another foul. Certainly that foul by Stokes was created by Shorter's use of the body. Stokes was forced to reach over and try to deflect it. Stokes is going to have to be forced to play more than he normally would, too. That's only his first foul, but again, some of the other big men have a problem with the foul situation. And Shorter goes back to the free throw line. He's three out of four. He missed his last one. And with the foul trouble along the front line, look for Pitt to come down each time and explore the big people inside to see if they can drop it down in so they can create a heavy foul situation. Remember, we have an intersectional matchup today. So the Big East that plays with six fouls, we're not using that rule. So it's a five-foul situation for both clubs. Shorter hits both free throws. He's got nine points, and it's back to a six-point Pittsburgh lead. Neilbach shotted by Porter. Man-to-man -man for Pittsburgh. Bushler wide open, but before the shot, we got a foul. Civic Arena in Pittsburgh, where the Panthers, with 12.47 to play, have a 57 to 51 lead. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you as we start off our Super Weekend. We've had a great game so far, and a lot more basketball, boxing, and then the Super Bowl coming up tomorrow. Here we are with CBS Sports this weekend. Well, we've had a chance to see the Pitt Panthers come out, play some things on defense that's really surprised Arizona. Plus, they utilize the quickness of their front line against those of Arizona, forcing the big guys of Arizona into more foul trouble, and that's really limited their play. Brian Shorter and uh, Bobby Martin have pretty much had their way inside, and it's been Rod Brooking from the outside. 16 points now for Bushler to lead Arizona in scoring. Pittsburgh still by four, and foul trouble galore for Arizona. Well, again, you see the three out of the four front-line players, all with four fouls, and Arizona can ill afford to lose any of them because some of them, particularly Sean Rooks and Brian Williams, provide some offense. Brian Brush in there right now for Pittsburgh. Porter works to the baseline. Tough shot to get the drop, and it doesn't. But it's picked up and put back in. How does it do? I don't know. Shorter finding a way. Pittsburgh by six. Bushler answers on the other end. He's got 18. And he's starting to go to work. Well, these are the two guys we highlighted at the top of the show. They lead their teams. They're strong on each end. But more importantly, it's their mere presence that picks everyone else up. Porter with three fouls. Hasn't penetrated as much. Nice pass into Shorter. Went up with the left hand. He's fouled by Stokes. Stokes second personal. So Shorter is going to go back to the free throw line. Brian Shorter, his best game of the year, maybe a 29.14 rebound outing against Georgia Tech. But he's had 12 double doubles last year, nine this season. He hits the free throw. He's hit three in a row now. Look at Paul Evans. I'm sure he's thinking forward to about four minutes left in this game. Hopefully, if he has the lead, that he can get the same kind of free throw accuracy. Shorter hits them both, and Pittsburgh goes back to a six-point cushion with 11.35 to go. Hold on to a six-point lead, 11.35 to go. And Lou Olsen's Wildcats in a lot of foul trouble. They played Thursday night, probably a little jet lag, a lot of things working against them in this ball game, and this kid's going to have to come out and play strong for him. Well, in 12 games this year, it's still going to play about 100 minutes. He's averaging a little a little bit uh, over two points a game, and he's got to do the job in here. He's got some uh, some help with Bushler and Williams, but with the foul trouble, he's going to be called upon to do an awful lot. Pittsburgh with a little backcourt pressure. Bushler brings it all the way to the baseline, out to Optic for three. 
short, shorter the rebound. He had a notion to hit Darrell Porter coming down the side, but he thought better of it as Arizona set up nicely defensively. Matthews on top to shorter. They work it around the perimeter. See down in the low post being guarded by Bushler is Brian Brush, number 15. He's a walk on for Pitt. And they're going to say that that was last touch by Pittsburgh. Here's the ball. Paul Evans can't believe it. You see Brush guarding uh, Bushler right there. He's given Pitt a big lift defensively over the last couple of games. Picks up the foul there. That's going to be his first foul. Coming up next on CBS Sports, our NCAA basketball little header continues. 11th ranked Orangemen from Syracuse, led by Derek Coleman, takes on Alonzo Morning in the third ranked Georgetown Hoyas for the first time this year. Big battle in the Big East, live from Capitol Center, Syracuse and Georgetown, followed by Super Middleweight Championship fight, Lindell Hurricane Holmes, and Frank Tate will have that at 5 Eastern time. It's all coming up on CBS today, starting our Super Weekend here on Super Saturday. And Judd Bushler missed this from the line as Lou Olson's cats are still down, 61-55. Brad, if you're Lute Olson, you've got to, on offense, recognize some of the more advantageous matchups with a Brian Brush on Judd Bushler. But defensively, you want to pressure the guards a bit, but you also want to make them pick up the dribbles and then peel back and help out inside, because that's where Pitt's going to explore and try to do most of the damage with the foul trouble against Arizona's big people. Brush on the drive, put up on the left hand, and Stokes rejected it. As we mentioned, Ed Stokes has the rise to the occasion. He's done it so far. That's a good beginning, exactly. Bushler, great pass to Williams. And a foul on Brush on top of it. Well, Ed Stokes not accustomed to being in the game. Brush drives, more or less telegraphs it, and Stokes does a nice job holding his ground. Swats it and keeps it in play. It's very important for young shot blockers to remember. It looks pretty when it goes out of bounds, but you've just given possession back to the other team. You want to be like the great shot blockers of Bill Russell to tip it up in the air, keep it in play, and try to gain possession for your team. Williams finishes off a three-point play. He's got seven points. And suddenly, it's Pittsburgh by only two. And just as suddenly, Pitt has now got to go deeper into their bench. And you have a chance to see Gilbert Johnson enter the game uh, to replace Brian Brush. They've got to find someone who can go out there and play and is a little more mobile than even a Darren Morningstar. Pittsburgh's a little offensive dry spell. They need a bucket this trip. Porter looks inside. Throws it down low to Shorter. Blocked again. This one by Williams. And here come the Wildcats to try to tie it. The Porter steals it right back. athlete on the pit team. And that's Darrell Porter. And this is a guy that was all city in baseball, in football, as well as basketball. And he showed his athletic ability and great anticipation on that play. I said to Darrell before the game, I said, you played the point this year, the two guard and some small forward last year. Do you ever come down court and almost lose sight of what you're supposed to be doing? As he hits the free throw, he said, well, he says, once in a while I come down and if a 6'8 guy picks me up, I want to do something to him. He says, go to the basket. But he has held back and stayed out at the point where he had 14 assists the other night against Syracuse. That's a career high for him. Well, you know, we saw him yesterday in practice when he got around the big guys inside, rebounding, kind of puffs up his chest. He's played every other position. Four-point lead. Muehlbach drives down. He's fouled by Matthews. Matthews picks up his third now. This is the kind of game that could really propel Pittsburgh into the second half of the Big East season, Len, and Arizona needs it to stay up there in the upper echelon in the country. They come in 12-3. and three. Well, it's the big confidence boost for both teams, for Pitt as a team, because they've suffered through a woeful season, at least by their standards. They need a win like this to kind of look forward to the Big East. Non-conference games. Everything is Big East as they wind down towards the tournament. Arizona, though, it gives them a lift individually. If individual players like an Ed Stokes or some of the younger guys do well here, that they've got confidence and it adds a little more depth to Lou Olson's already rich bench. Gilbach 
is six for six from the line. Has nine points, and it's again. Pittsburgh's lead's cut down to two. Under ten minutes to play. Good game going at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. I'd like to see Pitt with the lead. Wow, what a no-conscience shot by Matthews, his fourth three of the day. I was just going to say, get someone else involved to try to take the pressure off of the guys inside, make some other guys a threat, but if Matthews is going to bury it like that, let him keep firing away. Got an awfully quick release. Optic tries to answer on the other end, can't get it to go. Martin up high for the rebound. Here come the Panthers, shorter. Score. Hit by seven, and Porter will slow it down. It's one of the things that Pitt wanted to do. They're not very lucky in this area. Five threes for Jason Matthews, and it's hit by ten. and he answers with a three of his own. Well, I was mentioning before the other three that brought the house to their feet. This really hasn't been home for Pitt since they started playing home games here. They're only five and five. A lot of the complaints were that this place isn't as intimate as Fitzgerald, but they've got the crowd in the, on their feet right now in the game. Porter trying to leave it for Gilbert Johnson. Stray ball picked up by Martin. Here's the lob, shorter and low. half, 17 for the game. is making a big mistake right now in fronting Brian Shorter. I mean, if you're going to surround him with some help, let somebody drop back off, force Pitt to hit the jump shots, because if you front him and everyone else is pulled to the top, that's Shorter land right there. Chance for a three-point play for Shorter, who has 17 points and six rebounds. Took a shot in the eye from Stokes, who sits down with his third personal. So Stokes, a guy we talked about that would have to fill some of the big shoes inside. He's in foul trouble now for Lute Olsen with under eight minutes to go. Shorter tries to cap the three-point play. 7.55 to go. Hit by 10 here at home. Coverage of NCAA basketball will continue after this message from your local station. Normal home of the Panthers, about twice as many folks as normal in here, and Pittsburgh by 10 with 7.55 to play. Brad Nessler and Len Elmore with you, and Lenny, Arizona's made some runs, but Pitt keeps holding them off. Well, Pitt's doing a nice job of executing the offense and getting it to the people who are doing the job for him, and that's Ryan Shorter. Lute Olsen's going to have to find another way to play Shorter and still play some effective defense. Pittsburgh with a little full-court pressure. And this almost stolen away by Porter. That would have sent the house down again. Porter's played well. He hasn't scored a lot. He's done a nice job despite early foul trouble. I think with a double team. Almost traveled there. Mulebach gets it across the timeline. Nice lead for Rooks. Rooks hasn't been in since about halfway through the first half. Arizona just wants to let Pitt know that they're still in this game. They beat the press and did a nice job of attacking it rather than set it up, which would play in the Pitt's hands. Martin's going to bring it back out to Porter. Pitt wants to use as much time, I would guess, on every possession as possible. And when the clock does run down, you want to go to your hammer, your bread and butter, to try and shorter. There he is on the baseline. Top shot! The guy out on the golf course with his fights on and a thunderstorm. You know the lightning's coming and you know it's going to hit, but there's nothing you can do about it. And the lightning struck Womack, who fouls out with five, and that brings Stokes back in. So Arizona, we talked about their depth. They are going to have to use all of it today. 
Womack's gone with 7.15 to play. And what that does is it forces Lute Olsen to go to a bigger, less mobile player. Womack a little more versatile than Ed Stokes and doing a lot of things, including rebounding. 20, 20 points for Shorter, but he missed the chance for the three-point play. Othic way outside. Three won't go. Shorter wins the battle ahead to Matthews. Oh, they're going to say a turnover in the backcourt. Bring it back. Pittsburgh by 10 with just over seven minutes to play. Paul Evans' team hasn't beaten the top 25 club all year. Boy, they had chances. <laughs> They've lost to some big name teams. Georgia Tech twice, Syracuse twice. Stokes in close. Nice putback by Stokes. Well, Ed Stokes giving Lute Olsen exactly what he needs and what he lost with uh, Wayne Womack fouling out. Eight-point Pittsburgh lead. I think giving Porter as much trouble as he can. Picked up the foul, however. That's three on Othic. Othic, who played extensively a year ago, he's put on about 15 pounds, and it really shows. Out of Las Vegas. He still looks like a kid that needs parental guidance to go to the movies, but he is a little bigger than last season. Well, these guys are very deceiving. You and I mentioned as we watched the Arizona team come in, you could tell it was a West Coast team. The guys were pretty laid back. Some of the guys look like they belong on the beach playing volleyball. Optics three. Nice man. Out, but he can play. That's his third three-pointer of the day. The lead cut to five. It was ten just moments ago. Pittsburgh wants it in Shorter's hands, but not that far away from the basket. Knocked out of bounds, pit ball on their own baseline. And Brooken finally is going to return. He went out with foul trouble. He's got four, and he comes back in. Johnson goes out, so here's the stretch run for Evans. He brings Brooken off the bench with four fouls. This is when Brooken's got to utilize and muster up all of his senior experience here, keep his team under control. Nice entry pass into Matthews. Couldn't get it off the glass. And Othic picks up the loose ball. Stolen away. Matthews again. Scored. Hit by seven. Under the six-minute mark. Try to shock the Wildcats. Muehlbach for three. Good rebound by Stokes. Double team, though, trying to get it out of there. Othic kicks it out. Bushler. And now Muehlbach. They're trying to set up for a three-pointer. Here's one from a mile away. But Othic can't get it to go. Still Arizona ball. And Brad, you know, we're taking a look inside. And I'm looking at uh, Sean Brooks. He's got a look of frustration on his face. He hasn't been able to get the ball inside where he wants it. And he's totally left out of this game. And it's, just, it's really affected the other parts of his game, like rebounding and playing defense. You're right. You can see it on his face. Brooklyn's got him right now on the weak side. But he's been working that middle and not getting the pass. There he's got it. And they're going to call Shorter for the push. Third on Shorter. Arizona will bring Mason back off the bench. Paul Evans' team has a 78-71 lead with 5.08 to go, but Brooks will try to cut into that lead a bit more here from the line. Now with what is presently a seven-point lead, and kid having an opportunity to get the ball back, you kind of wonder, should they slow it down maybe and work some time off the clock and get it inside? I don't think Paul Evans is of that school simply because he knows his players. He knows that they play real well when they get momentum. Slowing it down might dull that momentum. Arizona could make another run, and you may never regain that momentum. So he wants to play it. Here comes Pittsburgh, and here they come. Porter all the way! And if you got it, you take it. And if you got it, flood it. Porter threw it down. It's 80-73. Bushler works to the paint. His 10-footer won't go. Got his own rebound. Partially blocked, I think, by Martin. Hit ball. Brad, 
Brad, the fifth big man has totally taken the Arizona big people out of this game. We got a timeout. 442 to go in the game. 80-73. Pittsburgh trying to hold on and pick off the number 19 Wildcats of Arizona. game. This is James Brown along with Billy Packer and a reminder that coming up later it'll be Georgetown and Syracuse. The Hoyas arrive in a few moments ago looking to stay near the top of the Big East standings. Syracuse will be looking to regain some of its lost luster. A lot of the burden will fall on the shoulders of a relaxed Derek Coleman. Coming up next. Pittsburgh by seven with 4.42 to go. Here's East and West and this one's take it back West, pal. Well, Darrell Porter's going to add a little emphasis right there. East and West in this one, and Big East coming up after this one. Syracuse and Georgetown will do battle in our doubleheader here on Super Saturday on CBS Sports. Great college basketball action and four and a half minutes left in this one. The Panthers try to hold on. Again, Arizona pressuring the point of the ball, but they're also fronting Brian Shorter, which I think is a no-no. Martin tried to hook off the glass and didn't get it. Ball out to Arizona. Pittsburgh by 7, 80-73. And so far, to talk about three-point shooting, Arizona just 6 of 17 from three-point range and only 4 out of 14 this half. And they're going to have to think about that pretty soon. It goes back into their 2-3 zone right now. That'll give them a little bit of a rest. Rooks kept it alive. Muehlbach for Bushler. But it also creates some offensive rebounding opportunities for Arizona. They're doing a nice job throughout this game in a man-to-man. -man, but they go to zone, and Arizona has offensive rebounding opportunities. Porter with some nice penetration. Almost ran out of places to go with it. But now Pitt will slow it down a little bit. Brooken's going to drop it back to Porter. He'll reset it. Brooken's open. He likes that spot. He got Joe Bushler to turn his head, keeping an eye on Brian Shorter, and that's all you need to give Rod Brooken. That was a two-point shot. Hit by eight. Good move by Stokes on the baseline. Stokes now double figures with ten. And that's, that's exactly what Arizona has to do. They've got to start looking to Sean Rooks and looking to Ed Stokes. Matthews drives. half and 21 for the game for Matthews. Well, here we see the drive by Jason Matthews down the lane. Ed Stokes comes over a little too late. He's on the opposite end of the ball. He should be in a health situation stepping under the basket before the drive even materialized, but he's guarding Brian Shorter, paying so much attention to him that he gets to his health position much too late. Matthews now to try to cap a three-point play. It does. 22 for Matthews. 85-78. They just changed the Arizona score. I stand corrected. 85-77. And a nice tip inside. As Stokes, despite foul trouble, working hard in there. And Arizona's doing exactly what they have to. They got it into Sean Rooks that time. They've got to get the big guys in the game. You know, your horses don't run unless you feed them now and then. <laughs> Bushler knocks it away from Brooken. Coming up next, the Hoyas and the Orangemen. Syracuse has had trouble winning at, or uh, at uh, Georgetown. As our NCAA basketball doubleheader here on Super Saturday continues. And Pittsburgh continues to try to hang on against Arizona. Lute Olsen's got to figure out what the heck is going on. But I'll tell you what's going on. Pitt's doing a great job of diversifying their offense. They've gone inside to Brian Shorter a number of times. They've gotten the outside shooting of Jason Matthews. And now they use the athletic ability and the size advantage that um, Darrell Porter has over the guards that are handling him. Porter for the one on one. Every free throw counts from here on out. Rooks pulled it off. 85-79, just over two and a half minutes to go. 
Last two at this time in this situation. Hoppick doesn't get the three. Porter keeps it alive for Matthews. Brook and foul going up. Paul Evans saying, nice job. I'm going to finish my thought. Last year at this time, Arizona had a Sean Elliott to get involved to really be the guy to go to. This year, they've got a number of guys. Judd Bushler, Matt Offick, Matt Muehlbach. Right there, Muehlbach takes the shot. Bushler with an offensive rebound, or so he thinks. But Pitt, continuing to seize the momentum, keeps attacking the basket, beating Arizona down court. A great touch by Matthews to save it on the baseline. And Brooken will try to make it pay off for Pittsburgh. <laughs> Hasn't played like a guy with a bad shoulder, has he? Well, I think that uh, he's totally forgotten what's going on with the, the hype of this game and actually being involved in it. But this is the time right now that Pitt usually self-destructs on the free throw line, yet they show no signs of it. Bill Box for three. Yes. Bill Box second three-pointer cuts it to a five-point Pittsburgh lead, 87-82, 2.13 to play. You know the sinking feeling of a dead battery. <sighs> Not now. Now there's the revolutionary diehard dual start. It's two diehard batteries in one. A simple twist taps its built-in spare diehard so you're not left stranded. Oh, thank you. It's cutting edge technology and it's diehard. Diehard dual start. More power when you need it most. My brother Tom used to flip me out. Every time I'd be watching a TV show I liked, he'd start flipping through the channels. <laughs> then we got this amazing Magnavox TV with a built-in smart window. Smart window. That lets Tommy flip through all the channels while I keep watching what I want to watch. Now I can see what I've been missing. And that's quite a lot. Yeah, thank you. Magnavox. Smart choice. Very smart. You can't miss it. It's the new look of Chevrolet. This year you'll see more new shapes and more new ideas than ever before. You'll see why nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. In 1990, we let our style do the talking. The heartbeat of America. Hurricane Holmes, bottle strike tape for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship today on CBS Sports Saturday. Civic Arena in Pittsburgh has been alive as the Panthers with an 87 to 82 lead over number 19 Arizona here with 2.13 to play. Coming up next, Syracuse and Georgetown, Big East battle as our doubleheader on CBS Sports continues. Alonzo Mourning against Derek Coleman and company. That should be a beauty. This one certainly has been. A lot of foul trouble for these two clubs, Len. Everyone's important now, obviously. Well, Pitt is able to, has been able to deplete the Arizona supply of big people. And one way they've done it is to get it into some of their big people, Brian Shorter, Bobby Martin, who utilizing their quickness have totally taken the big folks for Arizona out of the game. No fouls to give, and Matt Mulock just picked one up, his fourth. It's going to send Porter to the free throw line. You know, this game in the first half, that's when the, the pace was set. It's a game of second-chance opportunities. Pitt made the most of theirs, while Arizona turning the ball over the pit, giving them points off the turnovers, really have not get, gotten into sync. They haven't gotten their offense on track, and that's why their big guys, Brian Williams and Sean Rooks, really haven't been any factors. Darrell Porter had missed his last two before that one. It's both. Hit by seven. Arizona's going to have to start to hurry soon. We're at the two-minute mark. Good pass into Rooks. That's what we mean. you got to get this offense clicking. The outside shots will come if you can attack from the inside. And Arizona's strength has been going to Rooks and to Williams. Brooken broke the press himself. And now Pittsburgh will take some time. We're down to 143 to go. Hit by five. Porter penetrates, puts it up, has it rejected, but it's going to be goaltending on Stokes. And Porter 
Warriors had quite a second half. Ten points in this half. We approach the 92nd mark remaining. And there it is. No turnover call. Bushler. Signal was that the ball was tipped. Whistle. We're going to have a foul on Shorter. Inside against Stokes. Shorter's got four. Not the type of play at this point in the game that Paul Evans can really feel good about. He's got his head bowed a little bit. Here comes Casey Schmidt into the lineup, a 51% three-point shooter as a high school senior last year. Lute Olson knows pretty soon they're going to have to put it up from three-point land. Brian Shorter complaining that Stokes pushed him off. He also feels that, hey, that's a person I'm supposed to get him off. There's the threes on the day. Pittsburgh has really warmed it up in the second half from out there. Stokes with 10 points. He's got three block shots on the day, too, so he's doing a nice job on the defensive end. Missed a big free throw, short of the rebound. And we got a foul on Bushler. Lute Olsen's got to feel a bit snake-bitten here. Paul Evans has got to be happy about what's going on. Tough luck on that last foul. Judd Bushler was in good shape to tip it in, but he tipped it away from his teammate, Sean Brooks, who had it in his grasp. Lute Olsen, Pac-10 Coach of the Year last season. His Wildcats were 17-1 in conference play and entered the NCAA Tournament number one in the country. Shorter at the line. He's been pretty strong from the free throw line, as all the Panthers have. This would be a tough one for Lute Olsen to swallow, even though it's been a, a road trip from Stanford's, uh, the game it's against Stanford on Thursday, Land, but it could be a tough setback if Pitt holds on. Well, on paper, you'd have to say it'd be tough, and it would be something that Arizona would have a hard time recovering from, but Lute Olsen recognized what he was going into. The game Thursday night at Stanford was a tough one. They fly all morning Friday to get here, and his team is tired. Optic thought about the three was fouled by Jason Matthews. And Optic's upset with himself that he didn't take the three when he had the opener because they need all the points they can get in a hurry now with 1.12 to go. More well, personal on Matthews. You know, you don't, want to, you don't want to cry the blues for one coach because on the other side of it, Paul Evans can look at his schedule, all the tough teams that they played early on, the injuries, the key people like Sean Miller and Rod Brooken. So if those things have a way of evening out. Coming up next, part of our NCAA basketball doubleheader, the Big East, Syracuse and Georgetown. And what a battle that will be. And Optic missed from the free throw line. And that's a rarity. Optic's got three three-pointers on the day, but he's 0 for 1 from the line. Arizona now with some full-court pressure as Pitt leads 93-85. Well, here's the test right here. Arizona's going to play a little bit of defense. Shorter all the way. Foul going up. They're going to play a little bit of defense. Hopefully they won't let the ball get up as quickly as it did against the pressure that time. But they're going to have to come down, play a little bit of defense, and then foul. You've got to put Pitt to the test whether or not they can make their free throw. They failed some of those during this season. It remains to be seen what they're going to do with it now. So far, they've been in great shape. Two hours ago, we talked about Arizona's depth. Their second players fouled out. Womack left with 7.15 to go, and now Ed Stokes goes out. Finishes the game with 12 points and a minute five to play. Good job for the freshman. And this 6'6 junior has had quite an afternoon. Brian Shorter, 22 points and 10 rebounds, so another double-double for him. And he's hit three straight from the line. Three throws, the big problem for Pittsburgh all year. Today, that hasn't been the case. Doesn't get the roll on the second. Hit by nine with one minute to play. Arizona needs some three-pointers. They don't need turnovers, that's for sure. Sean Rooks doesn't get it in the paint. Bushler tried to follow. And we're going to have a foul on Martin inside. Lute Olsen is seventh year at Arizona, his 17th year overall in coaching. 
Mason comes back in, and Offit goes out. Bushler, who's at the free throw line. And we've got a timeout with 54 seconds to go. Pit 94-85 over Arizona. To understand Asia, you have to understand its customs, its mystery, its people. You have to know what makes a good impression and what offends. For over 40 years, we've been learning about Asia. So in addition to our convenient schedules, we can give you something no other U.S. airline can. The knowledge that comes after 40 years of helping people do business in Asia. People who want that competitive edge also want the nutrition of 100% whole grain. But if these eating cereals only Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. So only Wheaties gives you whole grain nutrition. Better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. When you've got your power stroke going, nothing's gonna beat you. Introducing Power Stick Antiperspirant. 24-hour protection in just one wide stroke. New Power Stick from Fabergé. Introducing new Extra Strength Rolaids, 250 milligrams stronger than Tums EX, 1,000 milligrams of fast relief. This settles it once and for all. Arizona's won 11 of their last 12, but they are in some trouble with 54 seconds to play. Well, Lute Olsen can only hope right now. <laughs> You can only hope you can make these free throws, create a few turnovers. Paul, Paul Evans, Evans says, let us have one. Paul Evans is saying, let's not go to the free throw line. No. Bushler has 25 points to go with 11 rebounds and 7 assists. What a game he's at. You see, you look at a guy like Ludos, and he's got some things he can smile about. The play of uh, Ed Stokes, among others. And this game is not going to be totally devastating in his program, obviously. Seven-point Pittsburgh lead. Here comes the backcourt pressure again. Ahead, shorter. We'll slow it down with 50 seconds to go. Nice job of splitting the double team. Foul on Rooks. Our Chevrolet players of the game. And two great performances by the young freshman, Ed Stokes, who ended up with 12 points before fouling out. And Brian Shorter, 23 points on the day, double figures and rebounds. And a check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated to each college's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Well, the thing that makes Stokes' game so important today is that on the front line, it really, except for Judd Bushler, didn't give Lute Olson much. Here's a guy, a freshman, who hadn't gotten very many minutes, really came on, came into his own, and exhibited the ability that everybody thought that he had when he was recruited. Jason Matthews with 23 points, much of the damage in the second half. Hits it from the line. Pitt in good shape. Syracuse and Georgetown coming up after this one, and we can only hope it's going to be as good as this one has been. Schmidt for three. We told you he can shoot from out there. Arizona needed that one, and they call a timeout with 37 seconds to play. And Pittsburgh by six. Arizona obviously Len's going to put on some full court pressure. What's Pittsburgh got to do in the next 37 seconds? Well, they have to stay away from the free throw line because I think right now it may sink in the problems that they've had before. It could work to their benefit, though. They've suffered so much that um, they're going to wind up going out here and doing the job. Hit by six. 37 seconds to play here in Pittsburgh. It's a quiet afternoon in Ford County. Marcy shopping? Yep, they had a fistful of coupons. Say she's going to get five bucks back. That's nothing, Gab. The road is getting hundreds back. On grocery? Oh, nope, on a new Chevy truck. But with cash back incentives, the benefits of purchasing now grow exponentially over the term of the contract. Cash back. No wonder people from Ford prefer Chevy trucks. 
nobody's winning like the heartbeat of America. Today's truck is Chevrolet. I know college won't be an easy climb. That's why I joined the Army. With the GI Bill and the Army College Fund, in two years I'll have $17,000 to help me pay for college. And I'm developing the confidence and determination I'll need to help me succeed when I get there. Now I know I can make it to the top, not just in college, but in whatever I do. Pittsburgh by six. There's the guy Pitt would love to have in the lineup to shoot free throw, Sean Miller. Sean Miller, when you heard Paul Evans talk about putting a finger in the dike and another leak pops open, the dike burst when Sean Miller went down. He's an excellent ball handler. And being an 89% career free throw shooter, he's the kind of guy that you want in the game at this particular time. Stress fracture of the left foot. He'll be out all season. Stress fracture has been a problem for Pittsburgh. In fact, they lost to another one of their players. Brock Generalovich also went down with a stress fracture in his foot. Been a stressful season for Paul Evans so far. 36 seconds to go. Could ease some of that pressure if his Panthers can convert. This guy you don't want at the line either. Well, that's what I was going to say. If you don't have Sean Miller on the line, Jason Matthews, you know, there's no drop in talent. Shooting about 88% right now in this season. He's got 19 points this half, 25 for the game, make it 26. Pittsburgh by eight. Try to shock Arizona. The Wildcats need some three-pointers. Mulebach way out. No good. Brooken with a big rebound, and he's fouled. Well, right now, the pit inside people, knowing that the shot's coming out from three-point area, they're just settling in, getting good position, waiting to get the rebound. Syracuse and Georgetown coming up next. A Big East battle. Coleman against Morning and company. And that should be a beauty. Our CBS Sports Super Saturday kicking off our Super Bowl weekend. Paul Evans looks out as Brooklyn just drains it. Well, he, he almost like smiled. He either, either looks like he's losing this game or he's about ready to explode with pride. Yeah. They hit the century mark. Hit by 10 of their great shape with 20 seconds now to go. Bushler drives in. They leave him alone. The Panthers now just want to spread it out. They'll foul Matthews or try to. Ball knocked away. And Arizona's going to have it. When you look at the score, 100 to 92, and you would think that the pace was one that would have worn down the Panthers, particular front line, guys who played a lot of minutes, but they hung in like troopers. I think with a three off the inbound, no good. Five seconds to play. And they're starting to celebrate at Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. The Panthers have had shots all season long at picking off top 25 teams, and it's finally going to pay off for them today. The Pitt Panthers upset the Wildcats of Arizona. There's the smile on Paul Evans' face. Panthers go to 7 and 10. The Wildcats fall to 12 and 4. Pittsburgh wins it 100 to 92. of 100% whole grain. But if these eating cereals, only Wheaties is made with 100% whole grain. So only Wheaties gives you whole grain nutrition. Better get your whole grain. You better eat your Wheaties. upset the number 19 Arizona Wildcats, 192. Coming up next on CBS Sports, part of our NCAA basketball doubleheader. It'll be Georgetown and Syracuse, a battle of two teams in the top dozen in the country. For Len Elmore, I'm Brad Nestler saying so long from Civic Arena in Pittsburgh. Final score, 192, Pitt with the upset. You've been watching CBS Sports coverage of NCAA college basketball, the home of the NCAA championship.